Hello and welcome to another episode of the Classical Republican. Today we're talking again about Alexander Dugin. Now I have uh, watched several hours and read many of his publications, all of which have come out in the last month. So he is talking about Ukraine in, uh, in uh, and he is, um, and so this is this is all from him, and I'll provide a little bit of analysis at the end. Um, and I did all this so you don't have to. Now we must remember that Dugin is a post-liberal. Uh, he is like many who believe that classical liberalism is crumbling as an ideology. This is the ideology of Hobbes and Locke and, and Jefferson and, um, you know, things like individual rights, elections. Oh, e individual rights as opposed to communal rights, uh, elections as opposed to, uh, uh, you know, her heredity. Um, yeah, and, uh, you know, progress as opposed to tradition. So this can be scary for people in the West because this is all that many people in the West know. So it can seem like, uh, you know, we want the, uh, you know, people who are, um, who are post-liberal are, you know, scary and want the, the sky to fall and crush everybody. But it's not exactly like that. Now, uh, let's talk about, uh, I'm going to read you here some of my notes that I've taken from, uh, from his interviews. <clears throat> so, first of all, um, I, I said that he was uh, a nationalist, and he's, he's, he, I have to refine that. So, I take that back. He's not a nationalist. He is a Slavophile. That's what he is. So, he, he likes Slavic, everything Slavic. But... Now, nationalist, nationalism, can, those are words, terms that can be uh, used in, uh, from various degrees. You have, um, you know, nationalism where it's uh, blood and soil. It's all about your, uh, you know, your uh, ethnic background. And uh, then you can, you know, you can go to the, the other extreme uh, where it's more of a uh, civic nationalism. You know, you're, you're more of a, a patriot. Um, doesn't really have any, you know, you, you, you have pride in your community and it's not, uh, really about your, um, ethnic identity or language or anything like that. Um, but that's, but, uh, so some people would still probably call him a nationalist, but he is, he is more technically a Slavophile. Um, he believes in Russian greatness and, uh, possibly their hegemony. Now, Ukraine, he does not see as a sovereign nation. He cannot take their identity seriously uh, because they are truly Slavic. And it, they seek, but they are seeking a Western identity um, over the last several years. And that is a form of genocide. And so um, that kind of kind of goes into his whole, you know, the whole argument that, um, you know, the uh, Ukrainians are... Are Nazis, <laughs> um, you know, even though Zelensky's Jewish. Um, so he was, uh, you know, you know, the, and and you know, there, there's, there's, uh, you know, a kernel of truth in that. In that, um, they were, um, you had the uh, anarchists um, who opposed the Bolsheviks. Um, the, then you had, you know, he argues that uh, this is an eighty-eight year mistake of Ukraine that the. Um, that uh, Lenin allowed for Ukraine to exist and be a Soviet republic and even gave the Crimea to them, which was a mistake, he says. Um, you know, Crimean, Crimean Peninsula is right there in just south of Ukraine. I'm saying. Um, so, uh, and then during World War II, there were some collaborators uh, in Ukraine who, uh, you know, still, you know, they didn't like the Soviets, they were opposing the Soviets, so they uh, decided to side with the Nazis when they came in, with the German, with the German army. army. So, um, and then today, uh, there are still uh, people who are, are, are maybe fascist or maybe, um, you know, uh, white supremacists. Um, you know, we have the KKK in the United States, I'm not excusing it. 
Uh, but I'm saying it's, it's, you know, can you call the United States a racist country simply because we have the KKK in the United States of America? So, I mean, it's kind of that kind of comparison. Um, so, yeah, so that's the, arg that's, I would say that's one of his weakest arguments. Um, he says that uh, Russia and the West must talk as civilizational peers. So this goes back to his Eurasianism. Uh, you can uh, if you want to learn more about that. See my my previous video on on Dugan and the fourth political theory. Um, Eurasianism. Uh, so he sees the that uh, the West is its own separate civilization and should only be talking to the Slavic civilization as an equal. Not as a hegemon, not as a uh, in a dominating position. So um, yeah, he, he believes in multipolarity, um, and they're fighting against the hegemonic totalitarian liberal system. Um, goes on to say that uh, he he said he actually said this in an interview that Putin is a monarch or emperor. Um, and I guess in a you know philosophical you know you get into some basic uh, political uh, philosoph uh, philosophy. He is you know he is the executive, and so he is uh, kind of the uh, you know he does have you know in a republic he would still be kind of that monarchical role, just as the United States has a a president, and so that's. Um, but but what he's saying is that he's a a a, na a natural a natural and popular monarch. And so he sees him as, as, um, um, as someone who is the embodiment of the Russian state and spirit and, um, and kind of, uh, you know, kind of an emperor in going back to the sense of how the czar was an emperor, um, and was the embodiment of the, the state, um, in old, the old Russian empire. Uh, one more thing about Ukraine. Um, oh, the goals for this war, um, that uh, Ukraine must be demilitarized, denazified, um, uh, free Don, ba Don, the whole Donbass region in Eastern Ukraine. Uh, he doesn't seem to have a, a, a specific goal as to whether they're going to be free, independent or part of Russia or, uh, even said united with Crimea in like a, a, a separate, uh, uh, a second Ukraine. Um, but this is also to assert Russian independence and sovereignty because this is, um, you know, with, with the United, with the West led by the United States having so much, uh, hegemony and domination over the rest of, uh, the world. Um, you know, Russia cannot be, uh, cannot be seen as a sovereign state, um, at, at this time. And, um, he's actually very pleased that the United States and the West has, uh, applied all these sanctions on Russia because it is forcing them to be more self-reliant. They're disconnecting from the West and they're not... They're not going to be um, so reliant on the West. Uh, he doesn't really seem to push it as far as autarky, which is to be completely self-reliant. But he, um, you know, he he does he does really prize this um, this uh, sense of self-reliance that is being forced upon Russia and the Russian people uh, by the West. Um. Let's see, in another interview, he talks about how um, Russian national identity is not nationalist, but imperial. Okay. So, and I kind of get where he's going with that in that uh, it's, he's just saying it's more natural for the um, Russian people uh, to have, a, um, to, to have a, a political system that would be in an empire as opposed to uh, a more modern nation state. Um, you know, he talks about the values of church, empire, uh, church being the uh, Russian Orthodox Church, um, empire 
being the Russian Empire. Um, the people being the Russian people, and so their you know their their ethnic identity, their culture, their traditions. Um, uh, but he also talks about justice, and so this is all about uh, he you know he raises justice as uh, as a value here. Um, in another interview, he does say that this is a war with the U.S. You know, it's not really a war with Ukraine. It's a war with the United States. Um, so, I mean, uh, he wasn't really clear on that. Uh, it's probably like, I mean, he could mean that it's a, it's a proxy war, which I guess it is. Um, he could, it could mean that um, it's just a war with uh, U.S. Influ against U.S. influence. So, that's... Um, yeah, so he sees he sees this war as directed against the United States. Um, all right, so uh, that's that's all his um, that's the latest from Alexander Dugan. Um, I want to remind you about the uh, his his idea of the fourth political theory. There was first uh, liberalism, and then there was uh, communism, as um, which kind of broke off from liberalism, then fascism broke off from, from communism um, and liberalism. And then he says, and then he says it's time for a fourth political theory. And that's what, that's what his uh, ideology is all about. But this is the, uh, this is the uh, ideological justification for all the suffering that is going on right now. Um, as a classical Republican, this is the Classical Republican channel, uh, I agree with some of his analysis, uh, some of his post-liberal um, analysis, um, but there's so much that I disagree with. For example, I don't agree with monarchy unless its power can be checked. He doesn't seem to, to uh, you know, to desire any check on the power of Putin. Putin should just be free to do as he pleases, but... Um, he re really seems to love the guy. Um, uh, he seems to, to want to remove U.S. domination simply to replace it with Russian domination. So I, you know, I can't agree with that. Um, now I hope for peace and I hope for a resolution in, uh, the Donbass region. And, um, uh, that's where we are right now. Long live the Republic.